Hey guys and girls, hope you're doing well. Board now back with you on this video. I will be talking about 1899. It's episode 5, and the episode is called The Calling. Full spoilers from the start of this review, as always. And what a big episode this is. This is my favourite episode of this series so far. It's a Marina Cent centric episode now not that much happens with her in the flashback it's mostly just more bits added to the insane asylum we see her being lo locked away in the room she's once again struggling and she she mentions that they're doing it to like cover up what's what's been going on and she mentions her brother again saying that he knew knew what was going on and that's why they did to him what they did without revealing what they did but it's more the meaty stuff that happens later in the episode that really makes the episode and adds more layers to marina's character and to the whole context of of the show we also find out then the older guy who we've been seeing who who runs this institution He's Marina's father. That's another juicy nugget that we find out in this episode. So I'm um, there's this main like gimmick in this episode, which I'll talk about in 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 a minute because it's really effective. It's really unsettling. But just to cover the stuff with Marina and the main sort of big plot developments with her. Because she's very protective of the boy. And there's once again tensions on board the ship. With many of them including the Captain Ick. Being more and more suspicious of him. And more in the mindset of. We, we want. We have to do something about him. Or we have to get answers from him. So even Ick who has so far erred on the side of, of caution more. He's starting to have his feelings turned a little bit on that like they lock him in the cupboard at the start of this review the captain does start of this review sorry start of this episode as a way to like keep him under control but marina helps him and, and helps him like escape and she once again protects him but as things develop in this episode and there's this threat out there and members of like the crew and the passengers seemingly coming after him she helps him hide away and, and she tries to get him to talk like more than ever she's desperate to get answers from him and he has this cryptic like reply where he says they're listening to us so I can't tell you anymore and she, he also mentions I can't give you the answers you want you need to talk to the creator which summons up thoughts ideas of like a godlike figure but it's probably fair to assume maybe the creator is Marina's father who we find out more about later in the episode and we find out is this guy running the institution at least in the flashbacks so the boy goes down into like the department underneath Marina's bed which we've seen him use in the past and he disappears in into the the tunnel type structure but Marina actually goes after him and she ends up coming out through like some sort of portal in in the sky and she ends up on on this land and it's actually the pl one of the places we saw her in, in the start of the episode so it becomes clear that this is something from her past because before she flashed earlier we saw like her standing over a gravestone or what appeared to be a gravestone it had like a cross sticking out the ground so without really revealing too much it's made clear this is something personal and important to marina's past so she she's at this this grave which obviously could be her brother maybe because it's been implied that he could be dead or something has happened to him but it's somewhere personal anyway and one little 
hint is the the boy and Daniel at one point when they're in the same location as Marina. Like Daniel seems to be saying to to keep her there, then then it's important to keep her safe and. He questions the boy leading her to to this place, but the boy also says then she'll be safe here because she won't remember it. And so so that's implying then whatever's going on in these in these flashbacks or in this other place is stuff which Marina has blocked out of her memory. Now another theory I have is that the boy could could be a brother because it does seem like the boy is going to turn out to be someone important from her past now obviously the hot theory is that Daniel's her her brother but like I don't think that's set in stone and that's not 100% so I, I, think, I think it's possible the boy could be a brother but this is like a younger version of him but yeah this is good stuff and this is around about the same location as like in this other space where the mental institution is meant to be but marina when she's back on the ship later on she she like eric comes after her and he's demanding answers because he he shows her the logbook and says your name's on the passenger list of, of the prometheus so how could that be and this is when we get the big reveals of the episode because she tells him that her family owns the ships that that they run like the cruise liners so and that includes her father and she explains that her father uses all this and is using them as like a social experiment, an experiment to do with psychology, which once again brings up the idea that this could be all in their heads or part of a fantasy or, or not quite real. But some of the details I like in this scene is is how she... Because they compare the notes to each other, like the two notes they've got. And I like at one point how she, she says she used the name Harry as like... Harrietta, like short for Harrietta, because that that was like her married name, I think she said. So I just like little details like that, partly because it's a good reveal and partly because it makes sense that she would use things like that as a, as a disguise to to make it harder for people to like track her and things like that. So it's a really good scene when this stuff comes out and you get other revelations like Ick also explains that he's, his name was on, was on that manifest as well and that he was seemed to be the captain of the ship which of course doesn't seem to be possible because of him being the captain of um, Cobra, Casbra and yeah that that seems unlikely but he's like what's going on here and they have to find out and that's when marina starts starts explaining to him then there's this department below the deck which goes into a a different area a seemingly a different time zone because he says about the boy escaping through one but because Ick seems to have one in his cabin, and then she explains there's a second one under her bed, and that that's obviously gonna be like important and tie in. But they use the one in the captain's like quarters, and they end up going back to the his location, his like past memory, which is like of him. At, at, at like at his family's house like and he explains a bit more about that so that's all good stuff and we we get to the end of the episode and, and we we see that one of like the crew members what like this one of the big ones who we've seen featured a lot he's seems to be working for marina's father and like the organization because he comes to him at the end in this setup, 
and like like the father says things like we need to get the boy we we need we need that pyramid which seems to be the device that controls time and everything and he's there to give him an update and what have you but it's yeah that's like the big hook and then the father who i know that actor he looks very familiar but he he looks out over all these like pyramid type shapes and and what have you and it's just this exciting visual that works so well and, and looks really good you can see there's some pretty decent money being spent on this show and, and well spent as well but that's another nice little hook at the end of the episode and once again that ups the stakes and the the bulk of the episode is like the stuff on the ship where you have these well the majority of the crew like and and passengers in a trance like state state and being like controlled seemingly by their watches or, or by some sort of like clock like sound and this starts like early in the episode where they all start moving in unison and they start moving in the same direction and it's almost like an infection style thing which provokes like ideas of like sci-fi and different things but I'll just say it lasts for like most of the episode. They seem to be looking for the boy but they're also moving in the same direction and like they're under control by some type cult and you're sort of assuming that it's got something to do with the father, with the people who only owns these ships. And because he's obviously after the boy, it seems, and he he's controlling them for this purpose, or someone's controlling them anyway. But another thing to say is that it's just so eerie and so well done. It's like definitely one of the best horror type sequences I've seen all year and I like the fact that it continues as long as it does because it just builds and adds suspense and also it has like rules to it it seems because it's it's only a certain amount of like the people on the ship but then at the same time more and more seem to get infected but then it's just really exciting to see the reaction from the ones who haven't been infected yet. As I said, I got the impression maybe the watches were causing it, but I'm not quite sure. But I do like the reactions and how they start, like, they target the others who haven't been infected and they end up, like, tying them up. So at one point, Olik, who obviously has had a bit of an attachment to Lei Ning, he ties her up, like, for her own safety, which she agrees to, and then it's sort of fitting, really, that Jerome, like, bursts in to Clement and Lucian's, like, cabin, and he holds them at gunpoint and, and t- turns them, ties them up, and it's only when he explains that you realise, yeah, he's doing it for their own good. Like he's doing it to, to stop them from being, well, caught in the middle of this thing and affected, I guess. So that's actually a good swerve, a good subversion, because it definitely makes it look like he's been like caught up in this trance, but he's actually protecting them. And, and they question this, obviously, and... Lucian is being his usual abrasive self towards him, whereas Clement is a bit more emotional because she obviously trusts him and it's like, I, I, why are you doing this? And he obviously explains and she understands a bit more. But yeah, I do like the way this all plays out and how dramatic and how tense it all is. But also just the rhythm of the whole thing with, as I said, this clock type noise building and building and, and these these different characters moving in unison across the the deck and they finally decide they've got to like sh- like start the engine again to to get back control of the ship that's like Daniel's idea and that's like put in motion but yeah 
what it leads to is a, a lot of these characters jumping overboard. They're like heading towards the deck and they, they all jump overboard, including Castor. And, and that's obviously a big one because that's someone we're invested in. And it, it does make you wonder if that death is going to stick or if it's going to be reversed somehow. Maybe turn out he's not really dead. But yeah, it, it once again builds stakes than... than uh, like a load of these people jump off off the ship seemingly to their death, including Castor, and we see the reaction from Castor's family as well, which sells it even more. So, really good episode. I think this might be the, the, the best episode so far. So that's 1899, The Calling. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've been watching this series as well. Like and subscribe as always. If you have any theories, throw them out there. Put them in the comments. What do you think is going to happen? Do you have any ideas about what some of this means? And obviously share me out on social media. Look out for some more TV reviews, some newer TV as well as this, I'm also doing, I did episode one of another new Netflix series, which is Wednesday, the Wednesday Adams spin-off. So I've done the first episode of that is up on the channel now. And I've also, well, me and Rachel McDonald, we're continuing our, our reviews of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So we've just done our season two review video and our best and worst episode review video so that's up on the channel now so check that out but i'll see you guys again soon thanks goodbye <laughs>